We will now discuss the matrix stacks and transforms that we need in OpenGL, especially in the context of drawing the four pillars. Let's first summarize the entire OpenGL pipeline for vertex transformations. We start with an object defined in object coordinates, that's in the native coordinate system of the object. In our case, this will always be in homogeneous coordinates x, y, z, w. Thereafter, you apply the model view transforms, which corresponds to the model view matrix. Note that this has both a model transformation, which is the object transformation, and the view transformation, which is GLM colon colon look at, which positions the camera appropriately. Thereafter, you apply the projection matrix, which goes from 3D to 2D, and this corresponds to GLM perspective. Now, the I coordinates are obtained after the model view transformation, actually before the projection transformation, and those correspond to the coordinates in the 3D world for lighting. But after you have the projection transformation, then what you get are clip coordinates. Here, everything is in the range of minus one to plus one. We are mapping the world essentially into a unit cube, actually a cube of two units from minus one to plus one. After this, you can do the perspective division or dehomogenization whereupon you get what is known as normalized device coordinates, which are then moved on to the pixels in the screen by using the viewport transformation and finally appear on your window. We are most interested in this lecture in the model view and projection transformations, which are usually represented using matrix tags corresponding to the model view and projection matrices. Matrix stacks are especially useful for hierarchically defined figures, such as you have a human body with a torso, then you have the hands, the legs, and effectively you can see this as being a scene graph in OpenGL or a hierarchy of different shapes. They're also very useful in our case for placing the pillars where we have the same geometry for the pillars, but we are placing them with different transformations and different colors. In old OpenGL, matrix stacks were handled with a number of GL commands, such as GL push matrix, GL pop matrix, GL load a matrix onto the stack, GL multiply a matrix to the right of the stack. However, these are all deprecated, and the current recommendation is you maintain the stack yourself, either using STL commands uh, in C++ or using any other technique. And this is, in fact, what is done in my test too. And you must manage the stack yourself for homework too. As far as the transformations are concerned, we write our own translate, scale, and rotate. And you will need to do that for homework one and homework two. Be somewhat careful of OpenGL convention. In old style OpenGL, one right multiplies the current matrix on top of the stack, which essentially means the last command in code is the first applied. GLM operations essentially follow this, but when you are doing the multiplication, you need to be careful to follow this. In old OpenGL, we also had commands like GLU look at and GLU perspective, which have the GLM equivalents of GLM look at and GLM perspective. And these are just matrices like any other transform. They right multiply the top of the stack, but that is the way in which you implement the model view in projection matrices. If you are stuck on how to implement these concepts in homework two, look at the MyTest sequence of demos, which will give you some ideas of how to best implement these. Let us talk about drawing the pillars in the display routine. In the first pillar, we right multiply the model view as an old OpenGL. Notice that the entire pillar drawing is between these push matrix and pop matrix blocks. 
In old OpenGL, these would be GL push matrix and GL pop matrix. In our case, we have to implement it ourselves, and so we push the matrix model view in the stack, pop the matrix model view from the stack. We'll show the stack commands in a bit. But let's look at the code within that. So first, we right multiply the model view matrix as in old OpenGL. Model view is equal to model view times GLM translate. The inputs for GLM translate are the matrix that you want to multiply by, which in this case is just the identity. And you have the translation amount, which is simply a WEC of 3 minus 0.4 minus 0 0.40. This just builds the translation matrix. The next command is this GL uniform matrix for FE, which simply provides the model view matrix as a uniform mat for to the shader. And it does it in location model view position. You are only providing one matrix. You don't transpose this matrix and you give it the input for the first element of the matrix. That's what the AND of model view 00, zero stands for. The second pillar is exactly the same code except now the translation is different, so it goes to 0.4, minus 0.4, and 0, instead of minus 0.4, minus 0.4, and 0. Uh, we have the same uniform matrix for FE, and we draw the cube. In this case, it's draw color of cube with color 1. So color 0 corresponds to red, color 1 corresponds to green, and so on. We now talk about the third pillar, which is exactly the same, and the fourth pillar, which is again exactly the same. Let's look at what our push and pop functions correspond to. In this case, we need to implement them ourselves. The push matrix function, given a matrix, which is in this case the model view matrix, pushes it onto the model view stack. Earlier, we defined the stack of matrix 4 of model view stack, and you push the matrix corresponding to that. The pop matrix function pops a matrix from the model view stack. It is a void function, so it's the void pop matrix function, and it checks the model view stack size. If there is a matrix on the model view stack, then you return this matrix. So you will set mat is equal to the top element of the stack. That's what model view stack dot uh, back does. And the pop back just removes that element from the stack. Otherwise, you just set it to the identity to prevent errors when popping an empty stack. Let me now show you demo one which has not just the floor, but also the pillars. First, I want to refresh your memory. This is demo zero, which is essentially my test one, which has just the floor. Now, we have this demo variable, which I alluded to earlier, and I can set it to one. Notice that the demo variable is used uh, in a lot of places. See here, I say demo is greater than or equal to two. Here I say if demo is greater than zero, then I actually draw the pillars, which is exactly the same code we saw earlier. And notice that I am drawing the floor here. Having done this, I exit out of my program. I compile. And now I can run the program. Here, I just have my floor and my four pillars. I can move in and out as before. This is working perfectly fine. But I have a question for you, which is, does the order of drawing matter? What if I move the floor, which I drew first, after the pillars in the code? And is this desirable? Or if not, what can I do about it? So think about this for a little bit while I write the code to change that. The code to change that is very simple. I will comment out the floor drawing routine here. And instead, I will add it later.
So see, does the order of drawing matter? What happens if I put it here? For convenience, I have already included the commands here with a comment. I go back now to my program and I will ex exit out of it. I make the new program where I change the order of the drawing. And voila, the floor now appears on top of the pillars. This is not surprising because I specified the drawing for the floor after the pillars, so it's reasonable it should overwrite the pillars. But this is not the desirable behavior because the floor actually lies behind the pillars. In the next segment, we will talk about Z-buffering to address this issue.